and it is my pleasure to welcome on stage the head of the optoelectronic sections at the European Space Agency, where she's managing technology developments for Earth observation and science missions, and she's also responsible for the coordination of the R&D activities in the fields of detectors, lasers, optical communications, photonics, leaders, and quantum technologies. She will give us an insight on quantum technologies in European Space Agency. So we are welcoming Kiki Minoglu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for the invitation for making me be here again. It's been uh, many, many years that I was here. Uh, actually, it's almost 20 years. I was working actually here when I did my PhD. I was Ergastiriakos uh, Synergatis, which means laboratory assistant. So brings back memories. This building was not there back then. So I'm trying also to gain a little bit of time because I, I, I'm sure that some people are still outside enjoying their lunch. So it's going to be difficult to, to collect everybody back. It's always like that, the first talk uh, after the lunch. So uh, I'm going to talk about quantum technologies in, uh, in ESA. So I'm not going to talk about AI, and I'm not going to talk about software. So, but I'm going to talk about technology that makes use of software, and I'm going to talk about technology that uh, is very important for cybersecurity and for secure communication. So I think this is a matching point so that the audience feels a little bit connected. And the last part of the presentation will be also how we can work together, because we are here uh, for exchanging opinions, but also for networking and for collaboration. So it will be interesting, I believe, to also show you what are the opportunities for all of us, all of you, to work together with ESA if you feel that you can do something interesting for us, which I'm sure you can. So what is ESA? My first uh, five slides is about what is ESA. ESA is the European Space Agency. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an agency, so it's uh, with uh, all the European countries, I'll come back to that, it's with 22 member states. Uh, we are more than 5,000 5, people working in different locations. Uh, we are implementing m more than 60% of the European space budget uh, that is available, so we have a lot of missions. Uh, 120 missions, 40 missions are upcoming. Probably you have heard of some of the missions that have been flown recently. Uh, the budget that we are running is in the order of uh, 7.1 uh, billion, uh, which is a big number. So it's easier, I think, to understand it if we make it... Uh, what does it mean for us, for every European citizen, is in the cost of one uh, cinema ticket uh, per year. So with 12 euros per, uh, per year, this is the cost for space uh, for all the European citizens. And what we do, uh, it, in our convention, the, the most important thing is we collaborate, of course, but for peaceful purposes. This is uh, not to be forgotten. And uh, so through cooperation with international partners, so we are there to promote the synergies between the industry, to support the European industry and the universities and SMEs, so on the entities in the space, and to make missions that make uh, sense and they are useful. As I said, we are 22 member states now, but we started back in 1975 uh, with uh, only 10 member states. And as you see back then, Greece was not. But now it is, and not only Greece, but also 22 in total. Uh, there are also some member states that um, are not officially member, but they have cooperating uh, agreements. So for example, Canada, if you see on the map, we also have some uh, cooperation with Canada. Uh, the locations. Um, we are located in Europe, it's a European Space Agency, but not only. In Europe, we have the biggest location is in Nordwijk, which is in Netherlands, close to Amsterdam and The Hague, that's where I'm also located. And this is the Center for Technology, that's where the industry is bringing the satellites and where we do the test. Um, then we have also establishments in other countries. We have in Germany, which is for the operations, and probably you have seen if you have followed the Rosetta mission a few years ago. This is the room where they had all the operations and they were uh, very happy when they managed, of course, to have the, to achieve the mission. Uh, we have in Spain, we have in Italy, in UK, for different applications. We also have some offices uh, outside of Europe. And we also have uh, the ground stations and the launching pad. So in Kourou, which is in French Guiana, in, uh, 
South America, we also have the European uh, launch pad where we can launch the satellites. It's a European territory and uh, CNES, so the French Space Agency is also operating there. So, what do we do? Um, the important thing is collaboration and synergy between the member states. <clears throat> and uh, ESA is one of a kind in terms of agency because we cover different disciplines and different applications. So we cover every area, as we say, of space sector. That means uh, telecommunications, earth observation, science, uh, human exploration, space transportation, so, and basic activities. Um, we, are trying, we try to be the world leader in technology. Um, and a few numbers, there are a number of satellites, and um, I'm sure we all use some of those in our everyday life and uh, a lot of launches also from the European uh, spaceport. <clears throat> what is the benefit now? Why do we do all that? Even though it costs only 12 euros, still, there should be a benefit, otherwise it doesn't make sense to do it. So the benefit, uh, starting with the aggressive you, uh, I think it's, it's you, is me, is everybody. For everybody, we make... We take advantage, we have a benefit by using space technologies. We use it in the telecommunication, we use it in the TV broadcasting, we use it in, uh, in the weather forecasting on our everyday life, in the navigation with the GPS. It's also good for our economy. Uh, there are a lot of uh, business and a lot of uh, space jobs that are created and they are maintained uh, by the support of the member states and the European Space Agency in the order of 8,000 jobs in Europe that have to do in the space sector, they are related to that. So it's a big economy also related to that. Uh, it's also good for our planet. I will only mention the, the Copernicus, which is one of the biggest uh, operational uh, flagship program for Earth observation, where we can monitor in uh, almost real time things that are happening in, uh, on Earth. So it has to do with the planet, with uh, climatology, but also with uh, uh, land sea monitoring of the temperature and different aspects. And of course it's our future and uh, I will try also to focus on technologies for the future. And it's a future because we try also to, to attract young people, to motivate young people and to, to foster also the engineering disciplines and not only the science disciplines and uh, in STEM and in, uh, in physical science. Now, I'll jump to the, to the second part, which is uh, the topic actually of the discussion, which is quantum technologies and why they are of strategic importance. Uh, here I just quote two things, the Agenda 2025, which is a document that our uh, general director uh, announced a few years ago, which uh, is the programmatics about what is the future. And there it was clearly mentioned out of the three technologies that he identified, uh, the other being propulsion and the other was in uh, advanced manufacturing, and in orbit servicing, the third was quantum technologies. So, okay, one can claim that was in 2025 or it was uh, just a few years ago, what happened before. I hope by the end of the presentation it will be clear that ESA and also the industry are very active for many years in quantum technologies. We were not expecting our director to just uh, claim that a few years ago and then to start working. That would have been a little bit too late. Uh, the right part is there's a technology strategy, which is a document, again, that we are updating regularly, where we have the strategy and the roadmap, and what are the actions and the activities that we plan to put uh, in action. And, of course, quantum is also there. Uh, it's not only ESA, of course, that has uh, realized that quantum is uh, very important. Uh, it's on European level, but also on global level. So, on European level, uh, maybe you have heard there was back in 2019 um, an announcement for the EuroQCI or the European Quantum Flagship uh, Initiative. So at European level, the Commission is also pushing a lot and is supporting a lot of the quantum technologies. And on the right part, you see major initiatives from all over the world and with some numbers, which I don't know if you can see, but uh, the numbers are... By, the, by now outdated, they are, they are increasing as we speak. So the funding that each na nation, each country, each agency, or its uh, private investment are putting for quantum is very, very big. So why is that? Why quantum? Quantum is an opportunity. Um, it's not something, of course, that we invented now. Quantum, it has to do with the physical mechanism and the physical properties of light and of atoms. But uh, the, why is it now the opportunity? Because we can bridge the two worlds. We can have on one side the quantum technologies that they used to be 
in the laboratories. You had some scientists, they were working with their small experiments, they were measuring, they were publishing. That's good. A lot of work for many, many years. Now is the time that we can bring this out and we can make it products or we can make services and we can use it in space. And on the other hand, space has very peculiar and very strange requirements. So we need to have sensors that they have very, very high accuracy. Or we need to do measurements that have never happened before. And quantum, uh, they offer quantum technologies uh, because of this uh, principle of operation that it's slightly different from the classical physics. Uh, it can offer us this possibility. So if we bridge those two worlds, request and need, it is the opportunity. So as I mentioned, it is disruptive. Uh, you can have high precision measurements. You can have uh, new technology ideas that they can uh, foster together. And you can uh, push and learn from the fundamental science. And on the other hand, you can develop the new capabilities, bring them out of the lab, and then you can harmonize what happens in the different labs, in the different uh, universities, and in the different uh, uh, industries. You, can, uh, you need to combine the funding and to have it in a harmonized approach, and to engage the people to follow that. Now, one way to engage is to share, of course, what is happening, and that's why I'm also here, because I would like to share what has happened, not only in the past three years, but as I said, it's something that has happened already for many years. These are some examples for 20 years of heritage. It started, for example, with atomic clocks uh, for the ISS. Uh, then we had some studies for the Hyper, which was uh, atom interferometer uh, studies. The Space Quest, which is uh, one of the big missions and... and uh, research for science, and also many, many technology activities. So for building blocks that you can build the whole operating system. Uh, quantum technology, yes, we are trying to push. However, uh, there, are, uh, and there, are, there is a big industry, but there are also a lot of small players that we need to support to bring the technology to a higher TRL, which is the technology readiness level. Otherwise, it cannot fly. We are interested in technologies that they can fly, of course. We are a space agency. And uh, I will try also to show some of the examples where we stand now, some of the most recent and state-of-the-art examples for quantum. As I said, we are working for years now. This is an example that has happened almost 10 years ago. And uh, this is a picture of our ground station that we have in Tenerife, in uh, Canarias Islands. And um, the experiments that we did there, it was also with the Professor uh, Zellinger, who was the recipient of the 2022 Prize in Physics, Nobel Prize. So, and it was published also in Nature. It was the world record at that time of communication, quantum communication between two nodes, uh, free space. So there was no fiber in between. We did between a ground station in Tenerife and a ground station in La Palma. So the two islands uh, separated by 140 kilometers. And that was back then uh, the world record using lasers, of course. Uh, this is an example of the a link that you can have also with a ground station with a satellite. The previous case was between two ground stations. In this case, you have the ground station and a satellite that is moving on top. So you are using the laser to, to, to hit the satellite, to target and point the satellite. I say it's very simple and easy, it's not. And then you use uh, another laser from the satellite, from the laser terminal on the satellite, to, to hit back to your ground station. Again, not so simple as, as it sounds, but possible. And this is actually what is happening in the optical communications. Uh, where do we stand now? Uh, the most recent example that I think it's worth mentioning here is uh, from April this year. Uh, we had our uh, spacecraft uh, JUICE that uh, launched to go to Jupiter, so to planet Jupiter. And inside, with the payload, so all the equipment that they fly together, that's the payload, uh, there was also a quantum sensor. Uh, this is an example of activities, how it, uh, throughout the years, and we start from 2000, for example, where you see how many activities and contracts are signed. So how many contracts ESA is given to the, uh, to the European industry? to make those type of technologies. You see a big evolution, especially in the last years. Uh, currently, we have more than 40 activities for uh, a multi-million project. Uh, and this is separate from the projects that are running, the, the missions. This is a pure R&D. So I think all the players around, they are very aware of the quantum. And uh, I believe that's one of the reasons also that I'm here to present quantum. 
Uh, how do you coordinate? Uh, ESA is a big place. You saw we are 5,000 people. Uh, we need somehow to coordinate. We need to make sure that we avoid application and that we don't miss any niche markets. We don't miss any, any gaps. Uh, therefore, we have a, a team. We have a cross-cutting initiative, as we say, where we try between the different directorates and the different establishments to regularly meet and, uh, and coordinate make a plan, make a strategy, together with our delegates, who are, the delegates are the representatives of each country, so of the member states, actually, and uh, together with the commission, so that we have a strategy all together, that we, because only we, if we, we have synergies, we can make it. This is for space, I think, one of the most important things. Um, then I will just try to, to tackle uh, three topics of what is quantum or some of the technologies that can be of interest, not only for space, I think, for general. One is quantum computing, and probably is the closest, I think, to the, to the audience today. So with uh, quantum computing or quantum computers, the advantage that you can have is that you can have uh, immense uh, capabilities in uh, computational uh, uh, strength that you can have. So you can have uh, much faster, you can uh, do a lot of um, very complex uh, computational algorithms. You can uh, do it much faster. If you consider the space, yes, that can have application in space. For example, if you want to operate a very big constellation of many satellites, or if you have a lot of data that come out from your satellite and you want to process them, and uh, the more faster you have the satellites or the more uh, the frame rates are bigger, the data are more, so the, the processes that you need should be faster. We are researching innovative concepts for quantum uh, computers. Uh, as I said, the, the applications could be different, observation, space operation, and there are also different platforms. That, that will be the end of my talk, where I will try to give a little bit of feeling how you can work together if you are interested and you are in this field. Uh, in quantum computing, some of the key words that maybe you have heard are, uh, it's, or some of the applications, as I mentioned, it's for um, space robotics, mission planning and schedule, as I mentioned, for big constellation, mission analysis and flight dynamics, or Earth observation. The second big area for the quantum is the quantum communication or, and also the quantum key distribution, more specifically, which is for secure communication. What is the challenge here? Between the two nodes that you want to collaborate or to communicate, usually called Alice and Bob, um, you try to have a secure communication. How it happens now with the, with the current way of communication, you have a, a key, a security key, that is uh, transferred via the traditional uh, algorithm or with a human courier. Uh, the idea using quantum communication is that you can use it uh, you can use the quantum, you can use the, the physical properties of the light, uh, and this is the added value because then that means that this is a secure way of communicating. If something goes wrong and is, uh, is hacked, the whole uh, transfer, the chain, then it will be easily recognizable, it will, it will stop. Uh, the highlights is, for example, the one that I mentioned, which is between two islands, but also what is important is the next level, which is between uh, a ground station and a satellite, or even between two satellites. You need, of course, to consider uh, different uh, challenges there. You need to have an encrypted node, or you need to have uh, how secure is the elements of the building blocks. And what can be the building blocks are, again, the keywords that maybe are of interest or importance when you talk about quantum communication. So you have the optical ground stations. Uh, you will have security engineering. So you need to know how to make a ground station secure. It doesn't mean because you have a laser shooting up that it's secure. There are a lot of different protocols and a lot of different uh, standards which we are all in the learning process on that, together with the commission. Uh, the post-quantum cryptography, this is not a technology, but it's a, it's a way, it's a process, how to make your communication uh, cyber safe. Then you have the entanglement-based QKD. So in the end, you have a source, and you need to have two photons that are entangled with each other. You have a pair of photons that they somehow they know each other what they are without nobody else knowing what is happening. And uh, quantum random uh, uh, number generators and quantum memories. Those are building blocks to make a full chain. And all of those, imagine, if you are on ground, things are much easier. I wouldn't say... A, completely easy, but much easier, because you don't need to have all the requirements for space. 
they're not going to fly, so the launching environment, you don't care. You don't have issues about uh, the, the vibration and the thermal and the radiation. So all those, if you want to work, operate in space, it's an extra element. And the last part is the quantum sensing. So here, uh, again, the applications can be Earth observation, can be navigation, so atomic clocks that they have a very, very accurate and uh, much better than the current major uh, funded clocks. Uh, cold atom interferometers to measure uh, gravitational waves, to measure uh, with very high accuracy um, our Earth, actually, and not only. And basic experiments like the coherence experiments or, um, or others. This is an example now how it looks, uh, because uh, we say quantum technology, but okay, what is it in the end? So that's an example of an uh, optical reference cavity. That's what you have on the left. And in the middle, you have an optical clock. So it, it doesn't look fantastic. <laughs> Usually, the equipment that we send in space, uh, they are not super uh, fancy. But the important thing is that they work. So um, what I want to say here is that for the optical clocks, the advantage that you can have is that you have uh, a, a very, very high accuracy. Uh, you can have also which compared to the clocks that we have now is, is 10 times higher or even more. Uh, so th imagine this for the GNSS, so for Galileo, for GPS, this is a very good feature. And uh, some of the elements that are important is the lasers, the optical cavities, the frequency combs, and many others. If you are in the domain of the physics, I believe you can recognize some of those terms. And the other element I said, so atom interferometers for gravity measurements and fundamental physics. Again, a lot of uh, years of experiment. This is how it looks, not very high-end compared to even our mobile. However, the technology and the physics that happen inside, this is uh, really, really important. Uh, the, I talked about the, the JUICE, so the satellite that we launched, the spacecraft that we launched to Jupiter in April, and uh, that inside it has a, a sensor, which is a quantum sensor. How does it look? It looks like that. Uh, it is a, a sensor called the MAXCA, and it measures the, the strength of the magnetic field. So again, here, it's the quantum properties that they help us to identify and to be able to measure the magnetic field from so far. Eh? We send it in space, and we measure the magnetic field. Uh, for navigation, this is an example of how we have a cold atom interferometer for navigation solution. So navigation is a Galileo. That's the most common and uh, well-known. Uh, the in-Earth observation, as I said, for uh, problems uh, not only in Earth observation, but also on the ground. This is an example of uh, how ESA uh, has collaborated with CERN. So CERN, you know, they do a lot of uh, uh, experiments in uh, basic physics. They have a lot of computational needs. So here, quantum uh, computing uh, can serve eventually. Uh, this is not hardware, obviously. This, uh, this is an example of, as I was talking about, the synergies and how much is not only ESA, and it's not only the private sector, it's also the whole commission behind uh, pushing and driving. Uh, on the left, we have our director general of ESA. In the middle is the Commissaire Breton, so from the European Commission, and then uh, uh, also the French uh, Prime Minister. So it's, it's really happening in European scale and also in nation, uh, international. Uh, human space flight. This is an example of um, what happened in the, in the zero-G aircraft. The zero-G aircraft is a... It's a special tool that we use to have experiments on uh, microgravity or zero gravity. So it's just a commercial aircraft from Airbus, obviously modified in, inside. It doesn't have the standard seats. And it flies uh, on a regular campaigns, test campaigns uh, from uh, Bordeaux. And then you have, the, it, it does some ups and downs, so it's a very crazy loop. And then you can uh, reach the zero G. And that's where you send your hardware. It can be also that maybe some of you, because also universities can send uh, some experiments, so it's, it's also open. Uh, why it is here is because the quantum technologies have been also flown there to check the maturity and to check if uh, it is possible, and they have shown very good uh, uh, behavior. And now, before I finish, as I said uh, at the beginning, it's important for me from this type of meeting with, uh, with different people and uh, different backgrounds and also um, different expectations, to show some opportunities how we can work together. And uh, please feel free also to come afterwards to find me and to, to discuss more, if you feel. 
Uh, these are some of the programs. Uh, on the right side is an example of quantum technologies that we use uh, or that we have in the pipeline in 10 different categories. I spoke for three or four of those. But on the left is uh, all the funding schemes that we can have in the way to, to put a proposal in the end. If you have any idea that can be from a very, very low TRL level, so just a blue sky idea, there is the OZIP, for example, platform that you can submit it. If it comes uh, only to telecommunication, there is the ARTES. If it comes for a higher TRL, so it's, it's a little bit advanced, then it, you can go for a TDE funding. If it is for science, it's CTP. So depending on where you stand and what is the funding or what, what you are looking for, uh, and now I'm talking to everybody, uh, industry, academia, uh, SMEs, uh, there are ways for collaboration. We're looking for, for good ideas. And uh, obviously, you have seen that uh, one of the more mature applications for quantum is telecommunication. Therefore, uh, I quote here the, the quantum technologies in the skylight, which is the strategic program of the telecommunication directorate. Uh, so the funding comes for applications in uh, mainly in QKD. And here you have some examples of classical optical comms, so because maybe you're working on classical optical or on quantum. Again, there are different ways of, uh, of funding. It can be, I think on my next slide, I have the different possibilities. So it can be, as I initiated, with competitive tenderness, you can get up to 100% funding, or it can be industry initiated with 50-50 funding, or it can be also large in companies with co-funded portfolios. So if you see that your business model, or you, you have something that it could be of interest, uh, I think it's a good idea just to, to have a chat with if you have any person at ESA that you can talk or uh, in any time, just try to think out of your specific, uh, you know, uh, customer oriented. Uh, maybe it's something else for somebody else there that it's interesting. So with this one, and as I said, if you have questions with uh, collaboration, I don't only address uh, the companies. I also address uh, universities and I address students. Also students can also come. We have a lot of different programs. I don't put it there, but if you are interested, I can always tell you. So, just to conclude before the questions, um, I think it's, it's quite evident, or at least I try to make quite evident, that um, we are at the quantum space age. So, we are in the midst of this quantum decade. Uh, I'm sure you have heard many times the word quantum. It starts to be a buzzword that many people use it even without knowing. And Actually, if people claim that they understand quantum, just be careful, because I don't think anybody understands completely quantum, including myself, obviously. Um, there are major leaps forward for uh, different applications. I mentioned some on communication, on the navigation, on the computing, for the sensing. And uh, I tried also to make clear that ESA, together with the Commission and together with uh, also the worldwide efforts, we try to push the technologies uh, to reach the next level. So the door is open, and uh, I hope I can... Um, I put a little bit of uh, seed to get a little bit of your interest, although I didn't talk about AI and about software, but please, please feel free to come back and to ask any questions you have. Thank you. <laughs>